uh, overviews disease transmission. And so you've probably heard a lot of this with COVID-19, you know, contact um, based disease transmission. It could be direct through, you know, handshaking or indirect um, through, you know, sneezing onto your hand, touching a doorknob, and then somebody else touches that doorknob and then goes hand, hand to mouth or droplet, as you see here, where this individual's aerosolizing, <laughs> it's disgusting, aerosolizing saliva into the air, and um, and presumably then somebody who, you know, is the unwitting recipient of that plume of, of nastiness can become sick. Another way is through vectors. Vectors are typically referring to insects, but often we, we, we will call animals vectors as well, like you know, a, a, you know, a, a raccoon with rabies that bites somebody or whatever, and so, or a dog with rabies. But um, vectors can be biological or mechanical. So mechanical, I'm sorry, biological vectors would include like mosquitoes. So here's a mosquito feeding on an individual. And so when we say something as a biological vector, that means that this mosquito, you know, absorbs a, a parasite into its, into its gut tract. And the parasite actually develops and grows in the mosquito. And then the mosquito goes off and bites somebody else. And the parasite in its new, in its new form or enhanced form is injected into another individual. A mechanical vector, however, is just a microbe that hitches a ride. The microbe doesn't need that particular vector in any stage of its life, life cycle. And so here's a fly, for example. Imagine this fly lands on a pile of poop out in a field somewhere and then comes buzzing around your picnic and lands on a hamburger bun. <laughs> you know, so this is these are actual microbes that are just casually hanging on to a fly, you know, either the sticky foot pads or the wings or whatever. And so the, the, the microbes just get picked up and transferred into a new, to a new um, substrate. They don't need the fly to complete their life cycle, unlike with biological vectors. So imagine this being like malaria. The malaria parasite has distinctly needs mosquitoes in order to complete its life cycle. Whereas, you know, a E. coli or salmonella in a pile of poop in a field doesn't need this fly. It can, it's perfectly happy. The microbe is perfectly happy in that pile of poop. It just accidentally gets picked up. So that's the fundamental difference between biological and mechanical. A vehicle is, when, is something that is transmission by a medium like food, water, or air. And fomite is what we, what we use to describe an inanimate object, like a doorknob. So again, vehicles are typically some kind of medium. You can even put, and I should have done this, but soil in there as well. Um, <clears throat> attachment is, is essential, right? And so, you know, if an individual, if, if a microbe tries to colonize and it's rapidly pooped out or peed out or whatever, the microbe is never going to establish itself. So not surprising. They have a lot of adherence structures. Pili and fimbriae are examples of adhesion molecules. And so pili are, are mainly for mating, for microbes to be able to exchange DNA. But the, um, um, but they're still capable of, 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 at of attachment. Usually it's cell to cell attachment to one another, but fimbriae are more likely to be designed for tissue attachment. And so fimbriae are more numerous and they're shorter than pili. Pili are less numerous and much longer. The, um, but they, either way, they're both types of virulence factors. And so colonization is the establishment of a site of microbial reproduction on or with it, within a host, not necessarily the result of tissue invasion or damage. Some of the adherence factors that play a role in disease, as I mentioned, fimbriae, again, filamentous structures that help microbes attach, uh, capsule layers that allow microbes to inhibit phagocytosis, Pili are necessary for genetic transfer, but they can also, you know, the microbes can stick to each other or they, in cases, possibly could use the, their um, reproductive pili to um, stick to tissue. S layers, uh, again, they're, you know, a little um, typically made, out of, made up of proteins on the, on the envelope of bacteria that help promote adherence and slime layers. Slime layers are just less organized layers than, than um, capsular layers. They're just more like, it's just more globby and <laughs> less organized. And microbes 
can have tocoic acids and lipotocoic acids. These are typically gram positives that have these adherence mechanisms. So here you're looking at uh, a microbe with a lot of fimbriae. In this particular case, it's the um, bacterium that causes gonorrhea, Neisseria gonorrhea. And these are, um, these are diplococci. The diplococci in this particular case are... are, um, are <laughs> diplococci in this particular case are, are, um, are, are, are here. Here's one, and then here's the other. They're sort of kidney bean shaped, and they're not... Um, um, they're not always like that, but, but typically that's how we find them. Sometimes they're in singles, sometimes they're in diplos like this. But all of this are fimbri all of these are fimbriae that allow them to stick to tissue. So you got to imagine these guys have, a, have it really hard because their job is to, you know, ascend the urethra, for example, and get into um, the urogenital tract. They often will also uh, ascend into the um, genital tract and, and, and eventually colonize the cervix. And so there's lots of mucus flow, lots of discharge, and, and, and particularly in the, ure the urethra, there's urine flow pretty regularly, and so the microbes can get pushed out. So it shouldn't surprise you then that they have a really elaborate mechanism for sticking to tissue and avoiding being sloughed, sloughed off. So here's our cartoon pathogen here, and it has these little adhesins, which are really tight to the cell. And then these adhesins allow the microbe to bind to receptors. So imagine fimbriae working together with these adhesins. So imagine a, a, a fimbria sticking out right here. Once the fimbria attaches, it can, it can sort of contract and pull the microbe in so that its tighter binding adhesins can, can stick. Another thing that microbes can use to stick are capsules, as, as you can see here from this capsule stain. The, the clear halo around the bacteria um, il illustrate the, the capsules. And again, I'll, I'll talk more about capsule staining in the um, lab portion of the class. So here's a bunch of um, microbial products or virulence factors and what they do. So it's, I do want you to kind of go through these, look at the types of microbes that produce them, and their mechanism of action. So coagulase, it's a test we often do in the general, in general micro and other classes like med micro. Microbes like Staph aureus can produce coagulase that actually clots fibrinogen, converts fibrinogen to fibrin, and forms clots. In the, in the blood, and that's beneficial to the microbe because it you know, sort of protects it from host defenses. Some guys like Clostridium can break down collagen, which is pretty um, uh, abundant in connective tissues in the extracellular matrix. And some microbes can break down DNA using deoxyribonucleases, and that lowers the viscosity of pus, for example. So lots of different examples of this. In the lab, we, we would have looked specifically at hemolysins by growing microbes on blood-containing auger. And then, uh, and again, I'll, I'll have handouts for that to, to talk about that in the lab portion. So again, go through these and have a look at some of the virulence factors and read up on the organisms that produce them and their mechanism of action. Um, invasion um, can, you know, there's a, there's a variety of ways microbes can invade. So it can be active penetration of host mucous membranes or epithelium or passive penetration. And so active penetration means the microbe has, you know, a flagellum and some special enzymes that allow it to bore through mucus or, 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 or epithelial layers. Um, but it's most, most often passive. Um, usually, like an insect pushes a microbe through the skin, or um, or or a um, wound. You know, you get burned, for example, and 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 then all this nutrient-rich exposed tissue is available for a microbe to colonize in from the soil, um, or parental parenteral root, where an individual is, you know, an IV drug user that injects things in. Because remember that this epidermal layer is mostly just dead keratinized tissue, and Keratin is a very difficult substrate to, to chew through, even if you're a microbe. There's some kinds of molds, you know, that cause like jock itch and stuff that can eat keratin, but they're not particularly common.